Hey there! In this video, we're gonna play an animation when the mouse hovers over an element. Then, when we no longer hover over that element, the animation will play in reverse. We will go through several use cases such as having a pop-up appear and disappear, or having multiple elements animate on mouse hover. So let's get into it. This is the setup I have. On my uh, page here, I have a PNG image of a glass of lemonade with a reflection effect applied. This object has two states, a normal state, which you can see right now, and a hover state, which shows an empty glass. This is optional, of course, but it adds a lot of character to our animation. And uh, it allows us to see when the mouse hovers over the object. So uh, to the left here, I have a leaf. This is the object we'll be moving once we hover over our drink. Before I get into the code, I need to make sure that I've given my objects uh, proper accessibility names. Uh, the drink has an accessibility text of drink and the leaf has the accessibility text leaf. And we'll create an execute JavaScript trigger that runs when the timeline starts on the slide. Good. Now it's time to add the code. First, I select my elements. This line will search the document for an element which has the alternate text value of drink. Then it will store that value in a variable called drink. And I do the same thing for the leaf element. Then I create a GSAP timeline with this line. I created the timeline in a paused state. This means that the animation will not play automatically when the slide timeline starts and this execute JavaScript trigger gets called. Instead, it will start paused. And then I added a two animation to the timeline we just created. Now, we can add several animations to a timeline in general, but this will be the only one we need for our effect. So this will be the only animation I'll be adding to this timeline right here. So what this line does is it takes our leaf element and moves it up on the y-axis by 100 pixels for a duration of 0.5 seconds. And it also has an ease applied to give it some character. But these lines of code by themselves won't achieve the effect we're looking for. We need to make it so that the leaf moves every time uh, our mouse hovers over the drink. To do that, we're going to need this bit of code. This will add an event listener that triggers every time the mouse hovers over the element. And every time the mouse hovers over the element, we tell it to play the animation timeline. We also need to add some functionality so that the animation plays in reverse when the mouse doesn't hover over the element anymore. Uh, to do that, we can use this event listener here. This checks for when the mouse doesn't hover over the drink and when it detects that the mouse has left the bounding box of the drink, it plays the animation timeline in reverse. Timeline.play and Timeline.reverse and Timeline.pause are basic functions of GSAP timelines. And there are so many ways you can use them in your projects to create smoother interactions and animations. As you can see, if I move my mouse over the drink, the leaf moves up. And when I move my mouse away, the leaf moves back down. Such a simple and underrated effect. And I've been looking to implement this kind of effect for a long time. But I never found a simple way to do it. Well, until now. I always wanted to add this type of effect to a pop-up, for example. You hover over something, the pop-up appears, you hover out, the pop-up disappears. Now, of course, you can do this with entrance and exit animations, but I hate using triggers for something that should be such a simple effect. If I have several elements, I have to duplicate triggers, it can just quickly turn projects into a mess. So check this example out. When I hover over my drink, the pop-up appears. And when I hover out, the pop-up animation plays in reverse and it disappears back where it came from. And I just reused the same code from my last example. I didn't even bother to change the variable name. I gave the pop-up uh, group an alternate text of leaf. Remember to click uh, to right-click the group in the timeline to avoid selecting only the uh, 
shape, for example. So I gave my group uh, an alternate text of leave, and the only thing I changed is the movement type so that my pop-up moves horizontally to an X of uh, 40, to an X value of 40. So there you have it. You now have a reusable block of code that you can apply whenever you want in your project. And look at how easy it is to obtain this smooth movement of the pop-up. Maybe you can't tell by just looking at it, but interacting with this feels so uh, instant and responsive. And honestly, it's amazing. Here's another example where I have uh, multiple elements and animating when I uh, hover over the drink. Again, I just reused the same code and changed the position the elements move to. And when declaring my leaf variable, I used query selector all, which selects all the elements with the accessibility text value of leaf. This means, of course, that I had to give all the leaf images the same accessibility text, which is leaf. Here's another example that uh, uses the same setup as the first example, but this time the functionality is different. Here's how our code looks. I enclosed my timeline in a function, and I call this function every time my mouse hovers over the drink. This means that as long as my mouse hovers over the drink, the function keeps being called. And so each time the function is called, a new animation is added to the timeline, which means that the leaf keeps moving up. And when the mouse hovers out, all the animations play in reverse until the leaf reaches its initial position. So there you go, I hope you like this effect. If you do, make sure to like and subscribe for more experiments and let me know if you use this in your projects. See you next time.